Hey guys, this is going to be a quick little video on how to get started with Docker and uh, WSL for Windows and more importantly Laravel and having a new Laravel application working within Docker containers, which is some exciting new tech and um, I think that we should just get started. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to install Docker Desktop. To do that, just go online as you would Docker, download Docker Desktop. For Windows in this case. And it's going to come to a certain page like this and you can uh, download uh, the installation for Windows. And it'll install with a WYSIWYG the same way that any other application installs and you will eventually come to a starting screen that will look not like this that won't have these little containers in there it'll probably be just a blank screen um, but that's okay because we're gonna fill in all of this information if you see a little blank screen before you start to go to the next step though we are gonna need to do a couple of things first we're gonna need to click on this little gear icon in the top right hand corner we're going to need to go down to, if this is not clicked, then do click it, but uh, it's grayed out for me. So that's in the general tab, and then you see here, use WSL based engine. But one way that you can get there is if you click on the resources tab, which is in the right hand side, or left hand side, sorry, and then click on the WSL integration. You'll see here that it pops up a couple of different things and you'll want to enable integration with additional distros. This might be unchecked. Do check this so that it is on. After you've made those two steps to the Docker setup, you're good to go to the next step, which is basically using WSL. Now WSL is a command line um, utility that Windows has. Um, that allows us to interact with a system basically like it was a Linux system. So um, we're going to just go to WSL, type in WSL, and then hit the run. Let's just see if this works because this is actually the first time that I've actually gotten there this time with the uh, just the command. I don't think it works. So, or if it did, I don't see it. So, what we're going to do is I again opened up a regular Windows terminal. Let me get this font a little bit larger for you guys. Okay, so I opened up a regular Windows terminal, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in WSL. I'm going to hit enter, and I always get this this error message. Um, so what I did, what I typically tend to do is if I just do WSL and then dash dash install, which is what you're only supposed to have to do the first time, but for whatever reason it seems like I have to do this every time. So WSL dash dash install dash D and then Ubuntu. I'll hit enter and then it will give me this message uh, that tells me that Ubuntu is already installed and launching Ubuntu. And then this is actually what we wanted to get to was a screen that will look like this. And let's just make sure that the font is still appropriately sized. Okay, cool. So, and you'll notice this little circular uh, Ubuntu icon if you're familiar with Ubuntu as a Linux system. And like I said, WSL is a Windows system that allows us to bridge the gap between um, what is programmed and what is set to be a Linux system. A lot of things that are programmed and used on in the tech world are Linux systems. Uh, most of the web servers that you'll encounter are Linux systems and uh, Mac OS can run those commands natively because Mac OS is based on Unix which is also runs a lot of the same commands as Linux does. But for Windows, Windows needed to build this utility and I imagine with Linux's help as well to make it to where Windows systems can now interact with Linux systems very similar. So if we do this command ls which most people who are familiar with Linux commands They'll, re they'll recognize immediately as, um, as, a, uh, as, a, as a Unix command. And then, you know, you've probably seen me run this command clear, uh, clears the, uh, the command prompt in Unix. So 
Now that we have WSL working and we have our command prompt open, we're going to look up the documentation for Laravel and how to get Laravel started. So what I'm going to do now is then just another Google search for install Laravel on Windows. It's going to come to the same page uh, for all of the operating systems, so you just have to choose uh, the section. I clicked on the first link, and then sometimes the link will actually show up here to a older version of Laravel, like something like 4.2 or 8 or something like that. You can click over here in this drop down, um, and that will uh, get you to where you might need to go. Uh, you could just select the newest version, or if you're uh, looking in the center here, you're browsing documentation for an old version of Laravel, consider upgrading your package. So we are going to do that, so we'll upgrade that. And so now we're on the most current version, 9.x uh, at the time of this recording. And we're in the installation section, and you'll see here there's Mac OS, there's Linux, and there's Windows here in the center. So we're going to click on that, and you'll see here that it starts off with the same things that we started off with we needed to download and install Docker Desktop. Then we needed to make sure that WSL was available. Um, Windows 10 needed to little, have a little bit more setup than Windows 11. So hopefully you're using a Windows 11 machine by this point. Um, but if you are using Windows 10, there's definitely a lot of uh, documentation and stuff like that to help you get started on that. I'm using Windows 11, so I didn't have a lot of problems setting up my WSL, but like I said, I still have this kind of weird thing where I have to type in WSL dash dash install dash D Ubuntu, um, or else it just won't launch. Uh, that was something that I had that I was supposed to only have to do the first time, but and maybe there was something that I just don't understand, but it seems to work. So if we have those two first steps set up, you'll notice down here that it says to launch Windows Terminal and begin a WSL uh, operating system uh, terminal, which we have here. And then we're going to use this curl command. And now curl is a utility, a server-side utility that allows you to make HTTP requests. That sounds like a lot, but really what that means is that servers, web servers, use this curl utility to make requests across the internet like we make requests across the internet all the time with a browser. But for a server, it's good to use a utility such as curl. And if you can see here, there's this command curl dash s, uh, and then there's a website, and then we're piping, that's what this little symbol here is, it means take the output of this first command and give it to this next command, and then we're piping that to bash in this case. And uh, this is a good command to use, but I actually could not get my system to cooperate and to work using this command. If we scroll down here a little bit further down, just a little bit further down, it will show us how to run this with certain options, which is also very cool because this is actually just a really interesting thing that you can do. So same command as above, but this time, there's this added little bit that's glued on to the end here with this question mark with equals MySQL comma Redis. And it's in the choosing your sales services. Basically what it shows us is that, you know, you don't just have to get a Laravel application and then download some of these services that you know you're going to use. So for example, like MySQL is a database that is typically used in Laravel and PHP applications. Um, and also many other programming languages. Um, and then uh, Postgres uh, SQL is, I think, what the PG stands for, uh, MariaDB. Then there's Redis and Memcache, and these two things are uh, very popular caching, server-side caching tools, and mail search, uh, mail hog are different ma email-related services. Selenium is a, is a testing service, and on and on and on. So basically what this is saying is that with these little extra options that we have, we can actually do more, we can build our application right off the bat with more services that we know that we're going to need. Let's build our application with some of these extra services that we know that we're going to need. So I'm gonna just 
Copy that line, I'm going to paste it in here, and then I'm going to hit enter into our WSL command. And you'll see that there's a Laravel prompt. And when you set up your uh, Ubuntu Linux for the first time, there will be a username and a password that you'll have to create. Um, I've already done this, obviously, so when you install it first, it'll ask you for a username and password. I'm just going to type in the username and password that I already set up. And you can see here that it basically has given us this great message that says that we're ready to create our app. Um, and we can just CD into example app. Now, I'm going to back up and actually call this something different than example app because I've actually used that alias before. And this is also kind of great because this will show you how to do it. Just this after the build, the first slash, you can name it to what you want to name it to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go test app. And this is going to be the new application that we're going to be working with. So the new stack. So you'll be able to clearly see that this is different and that we're doing this for real. So it's going to download some of these packages and uh, also, one of the other fun things to do is when we're over here in the Google Desktop, we can see here, so let's close this settings page, and let's go back here. Uh, it's not doing anything right now, but I've seen it in the past where I've actually been able to watch the containers get built um, as these commands were uh, coming through. Oh, actually, I think I know why. So it's then it's in the next it's in the next step when we do that. So okay, so we're gonna cd to test app, and we've gotten in there, and now we're going to run the. So we cd'd into our test application folder, sorry, and then we're going to run the other command that we need to run, which is also up above. So dot vendor, which is where we are, the folder that we're in slash vendor, which is a new folder, slash bin, which is a folder inside of vendor, slash sale, which is a command, and we're going to run up. And we're going to hit enter. And this is a bash file that basically is allowing us to build all of our applications. So now what you're seeing here in the background is all of our Docker instances being created for us, our MySQL instance, and our Redis instance that we asked for, and all of that stuff. And actually, if we open this up, you can see here that that's exactly what we have. We have a thing called test app Redis. We have a test app Laravel.test, and we have a test app MySQL. And all of that stuff is running. Now, I think at this point, we should be able to go back to our browser here. We should be able to type in localhost, and bam, we have a brand new application of Laravel running, and we haven't written any code yet. We haven't done anything that we needed to do as developers, but we have a Redis instance, a MySQL instance, um, and a web server and we're ready to create a new Laravel application, which we'll do in a future video. So thank you very much.